Wide receiver Treshawn Holden is reinstated back into the football program. Plus, Oregon hires Mike Cavanaugh as an assistant offensive line coach. I'm your host, Dominic Peterson. This is the Doug Zone 503 podcast where we talk all things Oregon football. Whether it's your first time viewing, long time viewing, kindly ask that you go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button down below. It really helps grow the podcast with the algorithm. But most importantly, guys, telling your friends and family about the podcast, your mom, your dad, your brother, your cousin, you guys get the point, right? Telling them about your favorite Oregon football podcast on YouTube is what really helps it grow, especially on the social medias at Doug Zone 503. We've been growing really fast on there. So, Really love and appreciate everybody's locked in. I'm your host, Dominic, independent podcaster here, lifelong Oregon fan season ticket holder, bringing you all the Oregon news on podcast form. All right, let's get into it. So we got a big episode here. I know I'm kind of late on this news. My So my equipment for my podcast equipment was in another location, as you know, here in Portland, especially if you've been here in the, the Portland metro area, we had a record snowfall okay a record amount of snowfall i'm talking 12 inches like a whole foot of snow came and they were talking it was just going to be a dusting maybe up to three inches if we got a lot of snow no this thing hit man and we all got trapped at least i did i got trapped luckily i didn't get trapped on the roads there was a whole bunch of people on the road stuck good thing that didn't happen to me i was at my house nice and warm got got to soak in a hot tub Got to slide down some some hills at my apartment, man. It, it was a good time for me. I had a great time in the snow. I always do. I love snow, man. Uh, as long as it's not ruining my schedule, right? Uh, kind of ruined it with uh, bringing this news to you guys, but never the doubt, I got you guys. All right. So over the time that was, I was packed in my house with the snow. Wide receiver Trayshawn Holden was reinstated back into the football program. Now I previously made a video that we can all just ignore pretty much now, uh, unless Oregon wants to. Uh, add another wide receiver. I had a, a video when he got dismissed off the team about five potential wide receivers Oregon could land. That was that was our previous episode. Completely dismissed that. Completely dismissed that. Unless Oregon really does want to get one of those guys. But I think with the move back, him coming back, I, I think that pretty much tosses that out the window. So if you haven't heard already, Holden was arrested by Eugene Police shortly after midnight on February 15th on accusations of felony unlawful use of a weapon and coercion and misdemeanor menacing and was dismissed while still in custody based on the initial accounts by law enforcement. Okay. So, you know, Dan Lanning immediately put his foot down. It was, I, I, I personally, I didn't know the details. I think, you know, Dan Lanning head coach, new head coach, he wants to make a statement, right. And, and let people know, if you do something where you break the law, you're not going to be on this team. And I think that's a good thing. Okay. When the, when the news came out, I don't know Trayshawn Holden personally. I don't know his background coming into a new place. He's a new transfer might want to defend himself. And that's fine as a second amendment. I'm not going to make a political, this ain't a political episode, but I think the second amendment is a great thing. And, and having a gun is a great thing for self-defense, but you got to be smart. You can't be pulling out for intimidate intimidation. Number one thing they tell you when you're a gun owner, and I own two guns, uh, AR style, M&P 15 Sport 2, and I own uh, another that's a SAR 9, a little pistol. Okay. I, I, I like to shoot guns. I'm not a big gun person. I don't know. I don't have a whole collection like I know some of my friends do, but I own a few. Okay. And I own some for self-defense and, and main reason. Somebody tries to break into my house or if I'm out and about, I have a carry where, you know, if I need to use it. I'll pull it out, but I'm only pulling it out if I'm going to use it. I'm not going to pull it out to intimidate somebody. It's, you can't do that, and those are charges, big charges coming at you. And I don't know if that was the case at the time, but for the evidence that we're going to talk about, that wasn't the case at all. Now, Holden was Holden. <laughs> we'll get into it. But he didn't intimidate nobody with it, and we'll get into it, guys. So after the body, after body camera footage comes out and interviews with people who are on the scene come out, Oregon head coach announced Holden will be reinstated back on the team. And I think this is the right move. Okay. You put your foot down. Okay. And I thought that was the right move by Dan Lanning. Okay. You don't want criminals on your team. Right. And then further evidence comes out. You see what happens and you bring it back on the team. I think that's the right move. And I think that's what I was pleading for publicly. Literally I was putting the hashtag let Holden play in comments and stuff like that. Some of you guys might've seen that on Instagram and Twitter, but I definitely try to get that rolling for him. Um, I, I think this is a lesson for Dan Lanning and within itself, though. 
you know, he's putting his foot down, letting letting people know, you know, what what's right and what's wrong and where, where, where to draw the line in the sand, right? And when news comes out about a gun and stuff like that, and you hear that as a coach, yeah, man, you don't want that about around your team. You don't want that around you as a coach and, and that tied to your program and your name. So you do the right thing and dismiss them. But I think the one thing you can do if you're Dan Lanning is look back on this and go, maybe I should have just waited until the investigation was completely over. Now, if you're facing felony charges, investigation could take a long, long time. I don't think Dan Lanning has, I don't think Dan Lanning has all day to wait around to see if he needs to cut him or not. I think it, it, it was, it was a thing where he didn't know how long the investigation was going to last. He didn't know the details. He just heard that his player was arrested and booked in jail. And if that's the case, that's where you draw the line in the sand. I, and you could always bring him back. Perfect example of what's happening right now. You can always bring him back if you feel like it. I mean, you're Dan the man, right? You're, you're the head coach. So you always bring him back if you want to. So let's get into it. So DA Chris Perosa said, let's get into uh, what happened with Holden and uh, and his girlfriend. So it was pretty much a dispute between him, him and his girlfriend that night. So District Attorney Chris Perosa said that Holden made legitimate attempts to de-escalate a dispute with his girlfriend. And you know how those things can always get with a man and a woman, right? A man always looks like the aggressive one, especially if he's holding a gun. It can get it can get icky and sticky, right? Eugene police responded to calls regarding a domestic dispute and claims a possible shots fired, which was false. Okay, no shots were fired. Perosa said that. The incident spiraled out of control quickly, and that Holden, who did have a gun, so he was he did have a gun. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, you can't you're not gonna be arrested for having a gun. But if you pull it out and threaten people with it, that's a whole nother deal, right? Would have had legitimate grounds of self-defense or defense of others. So the DA said even if he pulled it out, whatever was happening, he had legitimate terms of self-defense. Good thing nobody was killed, though. Good thing it's not getting into that situation. It was able to just de-escalate. I always like it when it de-escalates. As much shootings go down, try try your best to de-escalate without using a gun. And especially as a male with a female, I, you don't really need to do that. You, you only do that if your life's threatened, right? Because the gun was produced and found by police and based on the accounts they received on the night of the incident, Holden was ultimately arrested, but the initial accounts by several individuals to officers proved contradictory. So basically what that means is people said one thing during the night after the whole story was told by everybody with the, uh, surrounding the incident, he was eventually let go and the charges were dropped. So this came one week after Lane County District Attorney Office said Treshawn Holden would not be charged. Um, you know, when I seen he wasn't going to be charged and there's no crime committed, there's, in my mind, there's no reason why he shouldn't be allowed back on the team. Now, there's things that go into that, right? Hey, 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 hold in. What, what if, what if you know, he still has feelings about landing? Like, nah, man, you didn't really trust me. You didn't have my back. You let the media, you know, kind of crash me. And, you know, you know that whole debacle goes down. And, and, and you got to look at Treshawn's character here and, and who he is as a young man. And and you have Twitter right there. and you You can type away. And I'm sure his lawyers were telling him, don't do that. But... And tell his story and tell his side. I'm sure he wanted to with a lot of Oregon fans talking down on him, uh, the opposing fans of, of, of Oregon. I mean, you got UW fans talking trash because of what's happening and coaches letting him go. And he could have felt some type of way and went somewhere else. And that's what I kind of felt he might have would have done. Luckily, Dan Lanning comes around and this is a recruiting pitch within himself, right? Getting that trust back into a player. Getting that, getting that solid team chemistry going and 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 be able to lock in a player after what happened and I'm, and you know I'm sure it was all out of love I'm sure you know Lanning explained his position of where he was coming from and after everything came out it's good to see him coming back so in a statement Lanning said the following here following the release of new information from Lane County District Attorney's Office student athlete Treshawn Holden has been reinstated to the Oregon football program. Lanning continues here saying, we will always take allegations of this nature very seriously. However, when new information is provided by authorities, such as in this instance, disciplinary action will be reevaluated and adjusted when appropriate. So like I just said, guys, there's no there's no patience for that type of stuff. If there's guns and you're late, you're out late night doing stuff like that. You're not here to do that. You're here to be a football player and a student athlete, right? You're here to be a student. 
an athlete at the same time, you're not here to go party and, and go play with guns and, and have that. Now, you have the right to protect yourself 100%. Not saying you can't have a gun, but you can't be threatening people with them, okay? You got to only protect yourself with them. And landing, you know, pretty much, you know, seeing what was going on sounds like to me, I don't know exactly. This is just me off the reports. What, I, what I've seen, it probably is his girlfriend and him had an argument. His girlfriend started probably get, trying to get physical with him. And he was in an instance where he's, you know, it's getting loud. People are probably calling the cops because it's getting loud and rowdy. You know, how things go and cops pull up and his girlfriend probably knew he had a gun on him. And, and you know, certain females, how they are when they're emotional, they'll say anything. And it, it just looked like a bad situation for him. And, and he was almost in a really bad situation if there wasn't other people around to see what was really going on. So luckily for Holden, he's back on the team. Overall, I think this is a huge, you know, huge move for the team to bring him back. Like I said, you know, when he left the team, uh, you know, this Oregon wide receiver uh, group is very talented. I mean, you got Troy Franklin, right? Chris Hudson. Those are really good uh, commodities to have. But behind them, you don't really have proven commodities. You don't really have that veteran presence in the locker room that has played football, really. And Treshawn Holden being that third guy next to Chris Hudson and Troy Franklin is huge. No doubt. And I think it's also the right move by Dan Lanning. I, I already kind of said my piece on that. You know, definitely the right move by Lanning to bring him back. Uh, you know, if there's no crime committed, you got to bring him back, right? Lessons learned by Holden. I think next time, if there's a situation with the argument with his girlfriend, I think the best thing to do, dude, is walk away, get an Uber, just try to get away from the situation if you can't control it, is uh, kind of what I, what I kind of see here. So, you know, Holden is entering his fourth year as a junior. OK, so it is expected to, you know, have a starting spot here with the Ducks. Uh, his reinstatement gives Oregon 92 projected scholarship players, including nine wide receivers, which I think a couple of those guys might have to go because they're going to have to cut down to 85 by the fall. And nine wide receivers, I mean, can never get enough wide receivers. I always say that, but that's kind of a little bit bit. One or two guys could probably shake out six foot three, 214 pound Holden has 25, had 25 catches uh, for th 331 yards and six touchdowns at Alabama last season. Uh, 21 receptions and 239 yards and, and, a, and one score in 2021. So really productive wide receiver at Alabama. Not, never doubt, not the star there, but if he can give numbers like that here at Oregon, that's exactly what we need. We already have a guy in Troy Franklin who's a number one wide receiver star guy. Chris Hudson's been proven commodity can, can really be that number two guy. We miss out with Chase Cota. Chase Cota really helped this team. Devin, uh, uh yeah, well, I don't want to say Devin Williams, the, the, the guy that went to Tennessee, right? Big big six foot three wide receiver. He's gone. Jeez, I always miss their names for some reason. Dante Thornton. Dante Thornton goes to Tennessee, right? So Chase Cota, Dante Thornton leave. We were able to get Treshawn Holden in the transfer portal, which was huge. So when he when he got off the team, man, I was kind of worried. I was like, man, we need another transfer. It looks like, and that's why I put that video out. But nonetheless, it wasn't the only news that was to come out. That was big. Oregon also hired Mike Cavanaugh as an assistant offensive line coach. So new hire uh, earlier this month, Dan Lanning announced the hiring of a leak Terry as its new offensive line coach, replacing veteran offensive line coach, Adrian Clem, Adrian Clem went to new England Patriots going to the back to the NFL. That's big man. Going, going to play under a hall of fame coach under a hall of fame coach, man, like, like Bill Belichick. That's always big, right? Getting, getting promotions was Oregon's been is a promotional school. Uh, if you're an OC, a D a DC, uh, a positional coach here, you're able to maybe get that head coaching job. You always wanted. It's proven that you've maybe want to go to the NFL. It's just been proven with multiple guys. Kenny Dillingham going to ASU. I mean, even before that, Mario Cristobal was here. He constantly had to get new coordinators every year. It felt like, right? So congratulations to Adrian Clem and uh, congratulations to young Alik Terry, you know, becoming a, a position coach, really young. Uh, Terry is, uh, you know, an up and coming young coach with a lot of promise. Only thing is, is it's early in his career, right? So, you know, real early, it's your first time being a full-time position coach like this. And if you guys haven't checked it out already, I made a, a video on Alik Terry and his whole background and breaking down his, his co uh, who he is as a coach. If you guys want to check out that episode, but man, Alik Terry, young up and coming coach, a lot of promise, been around the program already. But you need somebody who's been there and done that. Okay, you can't just send a rookie out there to the Wolves. So what does Lanning do? He goes ahead and he hires veteran offensive line coach Mike Kavanaugh as an assistant offensive line coach to Terry. 
He'll also serve as an analyst type role as well, doing some analyst work under Terry. So Kavanaugh spent the last two seasons at Arizona State um, being their offensive line coach. Now, I know that doesn't ring bells for you guys, but he also spent time at Syracuse, Nebraska, and Oregon State when, when they had Mike Riley doing their thing there, among others, including he, went, he, was, he also coached in the NFL. 33 years of coaching Mike Kavanaugh under his belt. So you pair that with Alik Terry, a new young and up and comer with Mike Kavanaugh. It, it's it's a nice combo to have there. Now, do I think Alik Terry and Mike Kavanaugh is a better combo than having Adrian Clem there? Or before that, when you when you had um you know Mario Cristobal coaching up the offensive line? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna development development wise, recruiting wise, I don't expect to be better than what Adrian Clem did. I mean, Adrian Clem is a very great developmental coach. Recruiting wise, he was able to land guys here like Josh Connerly, get big time transfers like Junior Engelau, um, big time transfers like a Johnny Cornelius. So that's a big loss. And and you bring a young guy in who's not really proven, but he is a bright spot. Okay. Was had put put time in the NFL, Leak Terry. Right, and then you bring in a guy in Kavanaugh who's thirty three decades of coaching experience. Uh, great pairing. It's going to be interesting to see how they work together. Going to be interesting to see how this offensive line develops. They're going to have new offensive linemen um, all across the board here. I think they only have one returning starter, so it's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting group to watch for sure. Spring ball is coming up April 29th, the spring game, so it's going to be fun to watch. Treshawn Holden, welcome back. I'm gonna be happy to see the plays you make as a duck, man. I was really sad when you were going when you you know when you got dismissed off the team. I was real excited to see what you can do, and now you're back, man. You have the chance. Make the best out of it. Learn your lesson. <laughs> Learn your lesson, man. Learn your lesson. And Oregon also hires Mike Cavanaugh, big time veteran offensive line coach, to help Elite Terry with that offensive line group. I'm your host, Dominic Peterson. Again, guys, this is the Doug's Zone 503 podcast. If you, if you enjoy the podcast, go make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. But most importantly, telling your friends and family about the podcast, your favorite Oregon football podcast, the Doug's Zone 503 podcast on YouTube. As always, guys, go Ducks. I'll see you in the next pod.